What's up guys, my name is ESO and in today's video I'm going to be going over every single intelligence perk card in the game and telling you if they're worth taking or not. Now intelligence will definitely interest you if you're one of those people that's into crafting and you want to obtain the best weapons and armor in the entire game on your own or craft them for your friends as well. But the thing about intelligence is that you're only really going to need five intelligence because that will allow you to craft the best weapons in the game and then while you're exploring you can actually swap out the perk cards for extra stim pack healing and also being able to hack the master terminals at the same time. So right off the bat I'm telling you right now do not max out your intelligence stat it's not worth it at all or at least it's going to be very inefficient for you if you do. You can find a link in the description below to my perspective on the other special stat like strength and perception and so on. And remember that you can only choose one perk card each time you level up. So let's go over the most useful ones to actually choose. I've put timestamps of each perk card down below in the description if you want to favorite this video and use it for a reference as you're leveling up. And they will be eventually updating Fallout 76 with new perk cards, but currently this is every single perk card for intelligence at release. But if you want to stay up to date, please go ahead and subscribe and press that bell icon as well. And then YouTube will let you know if there's an updated video. So let's start off with the low level perk cards in order. Firstly, we have the first aid perk card. This is actually one of the best perk cards in the game for intelligence. It simply makes stim packs restore 15% more lost health. And at max rank, it's increased to 45%. Honestly, if you don't want to play the game at a disadvantage, especially in PvP, I would highly suggest maxing out this perk card at later levels at least. It's going to be useful on any character, especially when you're exploring. Next we have the Hacker perk. This gives you plus one for hacking and it also reduces the time that you are locked out from terminals if you fail to hack. Later on, you will be able to get the Advanced, Expert and Master Hacking perk cards which give you another plus one more to hacking. They all stack up on top of each other, which eventually will allow you to hack expert and master terminals as well. But firstly, if you guys didn't know, a quick tip. When you're actually hacking, you have four attempts, those four little green boxes there. But if you exit the terminal, those attempts will actually reset. So what I would recommend is just never using up your last guess and just exiting the terminal and then re-entering it again and you can start over then you'll never be locked out and you'll never have to worry about waiting until you can use the terminal again. So how useful is the hacking skill in Fallout 76? Well, if you want access to everything you come across, then obviously you're going to want it because there's a lot of locations with unopened safes or gates that cannot be locked picked and can only be opened by hacking a terminal. And some of these gates actually have power armor behind them. And if it spawns there, it's got less of a chance of someone taking it because you have to hack the terminal to actually obtain the power armor. So it's definitely worth one person in your team having an investment into the hacking skill. But you can also manage without the extra loot or easy access during quests. So don't worry about it if you don't want to invest in it. It's not crucial or anything. Next, we have the licensed plumber perk. Your pipe weapons break 30% more slowly and are cheaper to repair. At level 3 of this perk card, they break 90% slower instead. But to be honest, this perk is a complete waste of time and is absolutely pointless because you outlevel pipe weapons after a few hours of play, so the perk becomes a waste. The pharmacist perk card increases the effectiveness of Radaway by 30% at rank 1 and double the effectiveness at rank 3. Now this perk card is pretty useful if you don't want to use as much Radaway and depending on if you're exploring a nuclear wasteland you're obviously going to be taking more radiation damage. Though it is quite easy to actually find a hazmat suit. You can find one in Poseidon energy plant or you can just wear power armor and radiation won't be as much of an issue. I've got a link on where to find power armor down below in the description if you guys are interested. So because it's so easy to avoid radiation, I think that there are better perk card choices. Next we have exotic weapons. You can now craft crossbows and black powder guns and more. But you do however require the plans to first be able to make use of this perk. Also note that the exotic weapons only go up to rank 2 as well. That said though, crossbows do in excess of 100 damage later on and black powder guns do over 100 damage. 
even though they use 50 caliber bullets and both are very slow to reload. But they're really fun and they look so cool. I mean, crossbows, guys. So if you want to have fun, you know, try this one out. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Next we have the makeshift warrior perk. This makes your melee weapons break 10% slower and allows you to craft tier 1 melee weapons. It also goes all the way up to rank 5 where you can craft tier 5 melee weapons and they break half as quickly. Obviously this is an invaluable perk if you are planning to play my melee build. And excluding explosives and throwing weapons, melee damage is insanely good in this game as I showed you in my PvP video. Next though, we have the Demolition Expert perk. This gives you a flat plus 20% damage all the way up to double damage with explosives at rank 5 of this perk card. It's honestly insanely powerful. Explosives already do a lot of damage anyway, but now they're just ridiculous. You can also, by the way, get explosive rounds and grenade launchers at level 25. And that's going to be a very easy way to one hit kill people or groups of people even. That said, grenades are actually very hard to hit other players with in PvP because you can't actually cook a grenade, which is really annoying in a PvP game. But they're obviously very great for player versus environment. Next though we have the gunsmith perk and this is kind of the same thing. It also maxes out at rank 5 where you can make tier 5 guns and it makes them break up to 50% slower. Obviously it's useful for crafting guns, and to be honest, who isn't using guns in this game? It's the most common ammo type, and they're very readily available as it is, so everyone wants to upgrade their guns, and your whole team is going to find this invaluable. My only complaint is since nobody in the game really wants or needs to trade with you, apart from your friends, these crafting skills won't be, won't be an impressive source of caps for you. And even if somebody does trade with you, once they have the best weapon, they only need to repair it themselves and they don't need your help with that. So these crafting skills are not the secret to making caps. Trust me there, there are faster ways. So if you're going into crafting thinking, I'm going to make lots of caps by selling my weapons, it doesn't really work that way. Next we have the scrapper perk card. Ob obtain more components when you scrap weapons and armor. Now this perk is really simple and really really good because the whole game is literally based on breaking down items for scrap that you then use for crafting. So you can slot this perk card in and out whenever you're scrapping items. And even if you have level 1 intelligence, I suggest using this card. It only costs 1 point and it's going to be useful for your entire playthrough. Next we have the armorer perk cards, which allow you to create advanced armor mods. The next upgrade then makes them cost less material, which is a bit of a waste to be honest. And the final one makes them more durable, which again is better, but it's not really worth another two perk points to get this. So I would only invest the first perk point into this perk so you can get those better upgrades and then just leave it at that. The next perk card is Grease Monkey, which makes workshop items 30% cheaper to repair. Two points will make it 60% cheaper. Personally, I don't think it's that useful to spend the points on this, so I would skip it personally. Next we have the Contractor Perk. This makes crafting workshop items cost 25% less fewer materials and 50% fewer at rank 2. Again, it's the exact same thing as the previous perk card. I'm not really interested in this. Finally, we have the Science Crafting Perk which at rank 1, it allows you to craft energy weapons and energy weapon mods at rank 2. We then have the Science, Expert and Master Perk cards. Now it's a little bit strange how this works, but I only suggest investing 1 point each into the Expert and Master Perk cards. Then you can still craft rank 3 energy weapons, but if you invest 2 perk points into each one of these, it only improves the durability of your laser weapons, which is not massively useful to be honest, unless you want to use up two perk card slots for a slightly durable buff. It's just a bit of a waste and there are better things to spend your perk cards on. But now we have the Power Smith perk, which allows you to create advanced power armor mods and rank two of it reduces the cost and rank three increases the durability. Again, I would only get rank one for the advanced power armor mods. Next we have Fix It Good. This lets you repair power armor to 130% of its normal max condition. And at max rank, you can actually make power armor twice as durable, which is really useful if you never want to return to camp to repair your power armor. 
Then we have portable power armor, which makes the power armor parts and chassis weigh 25% less or 75% less at rank 3, which is quite a lot less weight to carry around. But considering power armor weighs nothing while you're wearing it, it's not really worth the investment at all and I'd obviously just pass on this one. Next though is the power patcher. This makes your power armor break 20% up to 60% more slowly and is that much more cheaper to repair again. And again, I wouldn't really personally use this one. I don't think it's that valuable to invest in. Next though we have the chemist perk which is insanely good because at rank it gives you double the amount of chems whenever you craft. And the next rank it gives you triple. So it's extremely effective for a chem build and I absolutely love this perk. I'm going to be using it all the time. Finally though, we have the robotic expert, which lets you hack enemy robots for a 25% chance to pass off. At rank three, you'll have a 75% chance. In my opinion, it's a little bit mm, useless on your own. Unless you're on your own sneaking, it doesn't really work that well in a gunfight, for example, because you're not going to stop and hack something. And even if it does, you only pacify it. Why not make it your follower? That would be much cooler and worth your time. I don't think it's very good. So there you have it, all the intelligence perks. And if you want my overall opinion, as I said earlier, I would personally only invest five points into intelligence, which is the optimal amount. So I could then swap out my perk cards for master crafting weapons and armor whenever I want to craft something. And then while I'm adventuring, I would take the first aid perk card, three points in that, and I would put the other two in the power armor fusion core endurance to give me some extra staying power in power armor and make my fusion cores last a bit longer. But to be honest, fusion cores aren't that hard to find, so I don't think it's really a problem anyway. And then I would have all my hacking perks ready just to swap in so I could hack my master terminals whenever I needed to. After investing five points in intelligence though, I feel like it becomes a lot less efficient and a bit of a point sink. So I would really recommend watching my other videos now on the other skills as soon as they come out. Make sure you subscribe for that guys and then you can get an idea of how to build your character extremely effectively. But let me know your thoughts and if I've missed any little secrets or tips you guys have in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for subscribing and your support on these guides guys. I hope you appreciate them. I do enjoy making them. So I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, have a great day.